Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket IT. Is your team still working remotely? Is it starting to look like a more permanent solution? Let us help you streamline that experience and increase productivity by creating a reliable network, increasing collaboration, and boosting security. Click the link in this video's description for more information about Rocket IT's Remote Workforce Roadmap. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Thrive, y'all. I'm your host, Jessica Clayton, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Rocket IT. Today, I have Casey Pierce joining me. Casey, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Anytime. So Casey is the Chief Development and Marketing Officer for Annandale Village. The organization is committed to provide to helping those in need. Casey, can you first just start? Just what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how many different hats do you tend to wear? Yeah, great question. I'm first of all, thank you again for having me. It's always a pleasure to get to talk about Annandale and the things that we do in the community. So as you mentioned, I'm the Chief Development and Marketing Officer. So I oversee all fundraising and development operations at Annandale, which accounts for about 20% of our budget. I also see all marketing and sales initiatives. We don't like to use the word sales though in our kind of in our industry, but we look at print marketing, direct marketing, digital marketing all kind of falls under my umbrella. And then lastly, I also oversee admissions. We have a really awesome admissions director. And so I work in support of her as well. Sounds like you are pulled in many different directions on <laughs> any given day. Yes. Yeah. What made you kind of have that passion to get involved in Annandale and considering that it's a nonprofit organization? Yeah, so I've always worked in nonprofit. Well, I should say always. I've worked in nonprofit for a really long time, about 16 years. And like a lot of development professionals, I really fell into it. I worked in the corporate environment for a few years and thought, I just don't know if this is what I want to do in, a, in my early 20s. And then I, I applied for every single nonprofit job I could think of. I mean, literally, I looked through the job postings and I was just like, I'm applying for them all. And I ended up getting the job as an annual fund manager at the Georgia Tech Alumni Association, and I loved it. I had a great, great mentors there, great kind of entry point into fundraising, really well, well established systems. And from there, I went to the Marcus Jewish Community Center of Atlanta, where I had a 10 year career. Interestingly enough, I'm not Jewish, but I really fell in love with the Jewish community, a very inclusive community, a community that cares about people and a community that was really doing a lot of great things. So for 10 years, I worked there. I went from the senior development associate to the director of annual giving to the director of development. Again, I've, I've been very fortunate in my career to have great mentors. So I had a great mentor at the, at the JCC who really just supported me and helped me. There always kind of felt like something was missing. I kind of felt like, you know, how can I impact people more? How can I, how can I do better? How can I use these skills that I think I, I have, you know, to, to really impact a, a group of, in need? And so I found out about the Annandale position. This was in 2019 through a mutual friend who knew Adam Pomeranz, our CEO. I personally, I live in Dunwoody and I was like, I'm not going to go to Swanee. Like Swanee's way too far. I'm not, there's no way I'm going to commute to Swanee. But when I came for my interview and I drove through the Annandale, you know, gate, we have this arch that kind of greets our campus. I drove under this arch and it sounds super cliche, but I just kind of felt like I was home and I, I got to meet the villagers. That's who we affectionately call our residents. And really, I felt like, OK, OK, how can I figure this out? How can I how can I find a way to make this commute work with my family and my children and my husband? And how can I how can I still grow professionally. And that was two years ago and, you know, still, still going strong. I'm sure it's flown by. It the pandemic didn't help, yeah. but, but yes, yes, it has. And it's been wonderful. 
So what other facilities or what all facilities does the organization provide for the villagers? Yeah, Annadale's super unique. And I didn't know this until I started working at Annadale, just how unique we were. So we offer what's called a full continuum of care. But really what that means is we can support adults. We only serve adults 18 or older with a primary diagnosis of an intellectual disability or developmental disability or an acquired brain injury. 89% of our residents have an intellectual or developmental disability and 11% have an acquired brain injury. But we can serve these adults at all stages of their development. So from the most independent, we have independent off-campus options, all the way to a skilled nursing level of care. We are the only skilled nursing facility in the Southeast that cares for individuals with developmental disabilities or acquired brain injuries. So the need in our community is great. And I didn't realize just how special and unique Annandale was. Annandale is one of only three organizations in the entire country that offers that full continuum of service and care. So residents, when they come to live with us, they, they live for hopefully their entire lives. Mm-hmm. As they age or as their disability becomes more challenging or they need more support, they can move through that continuum, but never leave home. You know, Annandale becomes their home. It really does. And the people that serve them also become their family. Absolutely. And the people that serve them, those direct care I'm going to call them heroes because they really are. They come in every day, you know, with just one thing on their mind, and that's to care for these villagers and help the villagers become as independent as possible. We really have a culture of independence and freedom and choice. You know, nobody lives there that wants to, that doesn't want to live there. That's very important to us. If if the villager, and, and we're really big on the villager being their own advocate, you know, what are you like? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What do you want to learn more about? Do you just want to stay in your room today and and hang out and and have a day off? That's okay too. You know, we all need that sometimes and we want to foster that for our villagers. That is great. And so in order to pretty much help provide that continuum of care, I, I'm pretty sure fundraising is a big aspect of that. And I know you all just had your annual golf classic, Rocket IT was able to come out and help support you all. Can you just talk about what's been the most successful fundraising event that you have overseen? Yeah. So I'm going to say something that as a development professional, I'm probably not not supposed to say, but events are rarely profitable. They're very difficult. Now they're wonderful, right? They're community builders. They're opportunities for people to network and learn more about your organization. They're important. They're very important. They're not always profitable. We were fortunate enough to have a very profitable golf tournament. So so several folks in the in the community are probably aware of Annadale's gala outdoor style event called Jazzy. Jazzy was canceled in 2020 when the pandemic set in. And then, you know, we, as we were planning for it, we just felt like having 800 people together, it was still just not So we shifted focus to do this inaugural golf tournament that raised $175,000 for Annandale. We kept our expenses very, very low for for an event. And and we're going to have a very profitable opportunity for our Annandale community. Uh, So profitable, in fact, that we're going to do it again next year. We've already decided we're going to do it again next year. We're not sure what the future of Jazzy is going to look like just yet, but We feel really confident that we can still provide the community with a great opportunity for inclusion and community building while still raising dollars for Annandale Village. That is a great number to be able to report on. That that's really great for the villagers. Yeah, for our first one, we were we were very pleased. Mm -hmm. And switching gears from that fundraising aspect to the marketing aspect, how do you kind of make sure that everything that you and your team put out directly aligns with Annandale's core values? Gosh, that's a great question, Jessica. You know, marketing should work in tandem with what you're doing. So we we essentially say that we're storytellers. You know, we want to tell Annandale's story. And we obviously have different audiences, right? You have your fundraising audience, your donor audience. So you want to tell that story that's going to impact potentially someone that could financially support you. But then there's also your 
prospective villagers. So we want to make sure that we market our story and tell our story to people who can access our services one day. So we have to tell that story as well. And then there's the community, you know, there it's, it's always amazing to me how many people don't know about Annandale in the community. And, and we've got to do a better job of, of in influencing our community and showing the community just the, the amazing work that we do. We start 190 uh, individuals each year through our day program, through our residential programs. And, and those are 190 individuals who would otherwise not have access to programs and services. So the, I'd like to think the work that we're doing in the community is really valuable. And so we, we kind of market to those three groups of people. We do that through a variety of ways. Like I mentioned earlier, digital print and direct marketing are kind of our three buckets that we really try to try to stick with. Mm-hmm. And is it difficult or have you had to overcome any challenges balancing that marketing and that financial aspect of your role? Yeah. So, you know, I my tried and true passion and my tried and true, you know, talents are really in that development and fundraising space. It's what I like. It's what I'm, I'd am i like to think I'm good at. I really love relationships. I mean, I, you know, you and I just met and I would love to just have coffee with you and hear your story. That's just who I am. So that resonates, I think, with donors. Marketing, I've had to work a lot harder at being, you know, being good at, for lack of a better term. But I will tell you, this is not a Casey effort. This is a team effort. And I am surrounded by a really awesome team. We have a director of marketing who is fantastic. Her name is Shanna Fogelman. She's just got the personality that that draws people in. We've got another staff member. Her name is Julie Ferguson. She handles our volunteer coordinator coordinating efforts. But I always tell people she's a unicorn. She'll do volunteer work one day. She manages our fundraising database to make sure that our our records are accurate, that we're keeping, you know, quality data so that we can build upon that year after year. She's also a very talented designer. So she can design pieces for us and work in tandem with our marketing team. Um, We just hired a director of development. Her name's Lindsay Borenstein. She is phenomenal. I mean, she is just, she's a great mix of us. the science behind fundraising, but also the art of fundraising. They're really two. And she, she marries those two together. And then last but not, certainly not least, we have a director of admissions named Teresa Claiborne. And Teresa is passionate about our villagers. She's passionate about providing a place where our villagers can be welcomed and feel like home. And and she's a, an unbelievable asset to the organization. So while I oversee these three departments, it it is it is one hundred percent a team effort and and we wouldn't be successful without without us. I, I often say we're a starfish. You know, we each have an arm and we and that arm, the starfish doesn't work without without that those arms. So that is very good. So I think you shared a lot of amazing information. How can our listeners get involved with Annandale Village or even contact? Yeah, thank you for, for giving me the forum to, to get more people involved. So three things. One, you know, we're all we are a nonprofit. 80% of our, our budget comes from program fees, 20% comes from the philanthropic community. We've got a lot of really cool opportunities for companies to be involved. We have a 5K coming up on August 28th at Swanee Town Center. So, you know, we'd love to give companies the opportunity to network and meet people in the community while also supporting us at the same time. You know, anyone that just feels philanthropically minded, our website is annandale.org slash donate. And there's opportunity there to give. But there's so many other opportunities to be involved as well. We're, we've been closed. Our campus has pretty much been closed since March of 2020. We are slowly reopening. And as we reopen, we're going to need volunteers to help so for vol- folks that feel civic-minded and that volunteer-minded, we would love to have you contact Julie Ferguson. She's our volunteer coordinator. She can help, you know, kind of get you set up with that. And then the last thing is, is to tell other people about us in the community. Tell other people about the great work that we're doing. 
call me. I'm happy to come and have lunch and coffee and dinner and breakfast with anybody and everyone who will listen. And I'd also love to learn more about our community and, you know, and where their passions lie and see how we can we can marry the two. I'm relatively new to the Gwinnett County market with just a little over two years. I still have a lot to learn. So I, I welcome the opportunity to meet people in the community as well. That is great. Thank you so much, Casey. Is there anything else you would like to our, our listeners to know? You know, I I told someone this the other day at our golf tournament. Someone was asking me questions about individuals with developmental disabilities and acquired brain injuries. And I think the one thing that I would love for the community just to kind of take with them and to remember is that regardless of your abilities, you know, everyone has the same hopes and dreams, right? Everyone hopes to have relationships and everyone hopes to make their mark on the on the world. Everyone hopes to have friends and work or volunteer and our villagers are no different. So for those small business owners that are hiring out there that are looking for for help, you know, keep our villagers in mind. They are excellent, excellent, excellent vocational workers. And so, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that resonates with people or or not, but we have opportunities in out there in the workforce for our villagers. Perfect. Thank you so much, Casey. All righty, everyone. That wraps up another episode of Thrive, y'all. Casey, thank you so much for being here and sharing all of the wonderful things that Annandale Village has going on. We're going to make sure to put all the links to all the resources that you mentioned in the description box below. Thank you, and I hope you all have a good rest of your day and see you on the next episode of Thrive. Bye, everyone. Bye.